This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plan, celebrating 77 years of providing Tennesseans with high-quality health coverage at affordable prices. Visit FBHP.com to learn more about their history in Tennessee and to get a quote. That's FBHP. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, and today, Amy, a big thrill. It is a big thrill. The 2023 first-round pick and second round pick on the OTP here as we have been displaced. We have been displaced, but I don't hate it. Okay. I like the different vibe. First of all, Peter Skaronsky, welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. 2023 first round pick. Yes. All right, so yeah. they're doing stuff in the Bed MGM studio today. Yes. What What were you guys doing in there, Peter? Uh, some TikTok trend game or something with music and uh, – I didn't really quite understand it. I didn't really get the appeal of it, but um, I'm sure when it's edited and it's posted, it'll look great. What did they ask you to do? We were listening to music. We were a group of four of us, and we all had headphones on. We were all listening to something, and three of us had the same thing, but one person didn't. And we listened to it for about 30 seconds, and then we had to point to whoever we thought wasn't listening to the same thing. Did you get the right person? I think I did. I think I got the right person every time. There's only three rounds, but yeah. <laughs> but he did it. It's that Northwestern education. <laughs> yeah, right. That's you you went training. to all those classes. My training paid off. It yeah. studied yeah. so hard. For at, TikTok games. At yeah. one yeah. of America's great universities for, for the – well, congratulations. Thank you. But yes. it is cool that they're doing those sorts of things, and, and that stuff's fun. Are you a TikTok guy? Uh, No, I'm not a TikTok guy. Okay. Not at all. But, uh, well, it's supposed to be banned soon anyways, right? Or that's what people are saying. So. Just, well, they'll do that right as I get on that. Yeah, right, yeah. right. So, no, I don't do TikTok. I, I don't TikTok either. But being back around here, being with everybody, the thing that I've heard the most about you is how good you look. Everybody's oh, saying, thank you. Everybody you look, says you look how fabulous. Good you thank you. Is Normally, I only hear that from my mom or somebody like that, <laughs> but that's pretty much it. But everybody has been saying that. Yeah, is that weird to you that, like, strangers are talking about how, how great you look? Um, I think as an offensive lineman, you're always – or just a football player in general, everyone's always like, oh, he looks good, he looks in shape, he looks bigger, he looks stronger. Um, so it's not, it's not unusual. Um, I was definitely way lighter last year, and so now I feel like I'm back to my normal size, um, maybe a little bit bigger than that. Uh, but in a in a good way, I feel I feel strong. I feel lean, um, but definitely bigger and probably a little more prepared for for the guard position. So, how many people who you don't know their first <laughs> name have asked you how much you weigh? Um, because that's such a bizarre thing. I don't know. Not, no, not really around this building. Um, <laughs> but in general, some people ask me that, and uh, I usually just say like over three hundred, and I leave it at that. Um, because sometimes people are like, oh, my God, there's no way you weigh that much, but whatever. But so I just leave it at over 300. Mike, what if people just started asking you what you weigh? Would that hit you sideways? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I mean uh, so you don't take it as rude when people Not do. really, no. Um, but it's still like a so- somewhat of a sensitive question, I guess. Sure. If, unless it's like a, a teammate or something like that. Because like, cause we're trained together. We always talk about like that kind of stuff. But like. So on the street, I think that's kind of a weird question, personally. What if somebody asks? Oh, I'd lie. I mean, <laughs> that's you just ask rude. Me, I'll it's give just, you a number. Yeah. <laughs> it in, won't be right. <laughs> in society, it's just kind of a rude thing to do, right? I yeah. mean, you don't ask them what they weigh. It's not yeah. super nice. But it is complimentary of where you are in terms of how prepared you are to do the second year of your job. I mean, it is relevant in that Yeah, way. for sure. For sure. Which is why when I, someone asked me around the building, I don't really mind talking about that. But uh, yeah, yeah, no doubt. Let me talk to you about the appendectomy. Oh, boy. Yeah. So, <laughs> you played the Saints the first game of the year. Mm-hmm. You go through the next week preparing for the Chargers. Thursday night is the O-line dinner? Yes, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, is the story straight that you think on Friday, well, maybe dinner hasn't settled with me? Yeah, so I thought it was originally thought to be food poisoning. A few people from the from the dinner the night before had not felt well afterwards, so everyone sort of thought I was in that category. Um, and then I, my stomach was really hurting, and then I didn't practice Friday. 
um, which I caught a lot of flack for, uh, you know, I, you know, rookie missing a practice for a tummy ache type of, you know, oh. <laughs> yeah. type of thing. <laughs> um, but then it hurt all day Friday. Then Saturday morning, I tried to do our walkthrough and I was like, okay, this might be my appendix. And I went right to the hospital and, uh, I think everyone understood that it was okay that I missed practice once my appendix burst. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, uh, an intense time and not Had it burst. Time. It did, yeah. Well, I, I was in the hospital, but before I went to surgery. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah, not fun. That's, a, I mean, that's a real serious medical issue at that point. It's more than just this thing's inflamed and should probably come out. I mean, that's a medical emergency. Yeah, yeah. So thank God I was at the hospital at that time um, and had the surgery. But then I had to go back to the hospital later in the week um, with like, a complication there. So that sort of set me back, too. It was a very miserable week. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, the week after I had it, so not fun, but I'm glad that's all behind me. You only have one appendix, so it can't happen again. <laughs> so, Peter, <laughs> a- after all of that goes on and you're able – you probably weren't able to even resume anything normal for two weeks after the surgery? Uh, yeah, yeah, roughly. Um, I think the week after the surgery was really miserable. I was Lost. almost barely yeah. eating. Yeah. I, w- I, was, I definitely wasn't coming in here, and I was barely eating. Um and so that was lost. The week after that, I kind of got back to working out a little bit. And then the week after that, I was kind of back into practice and uh, and getting prepared to play. So pretty quick, but it didn't feel that quick. Um, but, yeah, but then back into practice and kind of right back into it. You knew um, you had lost weight, but when you stepped on the scale, yeah. were you surprised at how much weight you had lost? Um, it wasn't that surprising because I knew how little I was eating. And, um, so I was like, yeah, it makes pretty much sense that I would, uh, have lost weight there, but, um, definitely still surprising. Cause you know, when you're a player, you kind of know what weight works for you and where you're most effective at what weight. And I was definitely not there. Um, so that was a little bit shocking even to see. Is something like that in the back of your mind when you're it, it during that miserable week where you're not really eating, you're not feeling well is, I've got to think about my weight. I can't let it fall too far. Is that in your brain? I will say not really. I was just like, just hoping to feel better. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I was not thinking about football that week, honestly. Right. Um, It was just like, just trying to recover. You were sick. Yeah. Yeah. I I was. Um, So yeah, no, (laughs) I didn't even (laughs) think, but you know, once that week had passed, I kind of got a little bit back to normal. Then I was like, okay, I need to start eating a little more, get back to like my weight. And, um, so I had definitely had to be intentional about that for sure. Um, but no, not that first week. I was like, Oof, I let me take a- Amy yeah. ask yeah. you a really good question. I'm going to take it a little bit further. Were you nervous about doing your job as an NFL guard, knowing I don't weigh what I'm supposed to weigh, and I'm going to play against a really nasty guy or two yeah. this week? Yeah, I don't think it, I really let it bother me too much. Okay. I mean, there's only so much I could do about it. Um, and you know, I, th- I wasn't at like a really, really drastically low weight where I was like like below what an offensive lineman should be ever. Um, I was just below where I thought I was more, most comfortable. Um, so I thought I would still be capable of doing it. I knew that there'd be a little bit of discomfort at first and a little bit of, uh, just kind of a learning curve and having to adjust to being a little lighter and a little weaker. Um, but no, I, I think when you're in the heat of the moment and you're, you know, you're out there and you're playing, I don't think you can really think about that. You just got to do it. And, and that's what happens. Offensive linemen are famous for not making excuses ever. But now looking back at it and, and talking to us about the situation, we didn't know you were sick after the fact either. We we knew it was hard. I mean, yeah, I mean, Vrabel I had said, and, and, you know, he wasn't a big sugarcoat guy, but he, he had made clear that you were having a tough time and that it was not an easy situation. But was there ever a point you feel like you got back to normal or were you always kind of being the kid in the class who was a little bit behind trying to catch up the whole trying time. No, I don't think so. And, um, you know, I, yeah, it was definitely a setback, but was it the, was it the only cause of, you know, some of the issues I had last year? Certainly not. Um, you know, there's plenty of technique issues and maybe conditioning and, um, just overall, just general skill issues that I could have fixed that, that caused me problems that wasn't, Oh, it's because of the appendix. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's definitely things I could have worked on and, I do feel like towards maybe the middle, you know, late November, I felt like I finally got in a groove and was playing more consistently. Um, You know, I think that was more of my peaks of the season. Um, But so, no, I didn't feel like I was always behind a little bit. Um, You know, like I said, I felt like I was still 
I wasn't at an unreasonably low weight where I just couldn't play the position anymore. It just was um, definitely a setback, but not the only cause of, of any issues I had. Might be a really stupid question, but the first game back after an abdominal surgery, would you worry about getting hit in the stomach? No, I, I wasn't. I felt pretty, you know, thankful that my surgeon did a great job and I had a great doctors and the training staff did a great job. So I wasn't worried about that at all. It was... To be honest, I think the biggest thing I felt after that game was just the conditioning, honestly. Yeah. It was just like the level of soreness <laughs> and how tired I was, um, which you can't you can't really recreate conditioning right. besides being in a game. Like It's hard to really recreate that um, and that feeling of the violence of all that. So I think that was one of the bigger things that I felt um, coming off that game. But no, thank, you know, I had a really, really great medical support team and didn't, wasn't worried about that at all. So Are you used to being a guard now? I'd say so, yeah. Um, looking back at like this time a year ago and just how out of sorts I felt, uh, just almost not even comfortable in a guard stance. And now I just feel I feel light years ahead of where I was then. I mean, I was really just starting out then at, at the position. Um, but certainly, you know, you know, played in 14 games and had a whole offseason to train guard too um, from the end of the season until now. So definitely feel much more comfortable in that position. Training guard, what does that entail? How is your training different for that position? I don't think in like a strength and conditioning terms it's that much different, but when you're working technique, you're working skills, even the offseason, if it's just on air, it's just, you know, by yourself on turf and stuff like that. It's just you're training different sets, you're training different stances, you're training different run game techniques. Um, a lot of it is in pass pro with your set and stance um, and that kind of stuff and some situations you'll be in. Um, but I think about, you know, pre-draft, I was doing mostly tackle stuff and tackle, you know, having my foot way further back and taking bigger kicks and stuff like that and being in a more staggered stance where now I've had this whole offseason to really train in a guard position um, and work on those things that I'll be in a lot. The stance is the big difference. I'd say I think that was a, a significant difference because that's really where everything starts. I mean, that, that's really where it all begins. So, um, yeah, especially pass protection, too, it's a lot different. Um, generally run game fundamentals stay the same roughly, um, you know, from left tackle to right tackle, but with, with guard to tackle, the pass protection is a little bit different in terms of your depth and your kicks, um, you know, where you have help, where you don't have help. So, yeah. I thought about Bill Callahan immediately when we knew Peter was coming up, not just because he's the offensive line coach, but because... He's a Chicago guy. He is, yeah. He sounds like a Chicago guy. Mm. And so I wonder for you, is that is that something when you hear him and he's giving you instruction and he's giving you encouragement or he's getting on you, you say, I, I know this guy. I know what he's all about and what he wants. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He almost reminds me of my dad a little bit too because okay. they're, they're about the same age and they're both from Chicago. Um, so, like, you know, very similar demeanor in that sense. Um you know, he's a White Sox fan. I'm a White Sox fan. We can bond over how bad they are this year. <laughs> not um, a good year. No, they're not. Uh, not a good year. <laughs> but that's a that's a whole other topic of conversation. Um, but yeah, for sure, just someone I'm used to being around. Um, you know, had had some prior knowledge of him just based on guys I trained with this off season and telling him, telling me how he was with them when when he when they coached them. Um, so yeah, but definitely a level of comfort in terms of like knowing you know some from the same place, similar background. Um, but yeah, it doesn't make it any easier. It's still intense. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's a guy that is just known throughout the league for the way that he coaches the intensity, like you just mentioned with which he coaches. When you first found out that he was going to be your position coach, what were your thoughts? You know, definitely excitement. I think, you know, his resume sort of speaks for itself in terms of where he's been and the type of players he's produced. Um, and definitely in the offensive line community, he has a lot, a lot of respect in terms of being able to develop players. Um, so I thought that would be a really great thing for my development um, and just becoming a better guard. And it's just learning from him because I've seen him because he's shown he can do it with a lot of players. So, yeah, definitely, definitely a lot of excitement in there. Is he hard on you? Yeah, I mean, he's hard on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, for sure, for sure. I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't take it easy. He wants you to get better. Um, but he's hard in a good way where he wants you to be good and he just wants you to wants you to perform the best way you can and he knows how you can he knows how you can do that and he just wants to help you what does he emphasize the most that maybe you haven't had emphasized at different points in your career as an offensive lineman that you're having to learn and get used to I think uh, his hand usage which 
we could spend hours talking about it right now. Um, but his punching system and there's a numbering system that goes with his punching system and how he wants you to strike people in a certain way and how your arm has to be a certain way when you strike a person here and when you strike them on the outside or in the middle or underneath or something like that. Like it's very, very detailed, but he, he emphasized that a ton in terms of like where you're grabbing a guy, how you're grabbing a guy, which hand, uh, which angle. Um, it's a really, really big emphasis for him, and I've never really been around a system like that that goes into like that kind of depth and uh, precision. So it's very interesting, but I'm enjoying it. Having a year under your belt of being a professional, are you surprised by the level of what may feel like minutia and the tiniest little details that can make such a difference at this level? Um, I mean, for sure. I think it's definitely a shock, especially when you first come in, because a lot of times you can win in college or high school with just like your pure athleticism and just pure talent. Like you're better, you're better than most guys. So that's the case. But now, like you said, like there's more minutia, there's more detail to it because everyone's so good and you really, really have to hone in on that technique and those fine details of everything. Um, so yeah, you're, you're totally right. It's definitely like a culture shock when you come in in terms of like, okay, I actually have to be really, really precise with my punch and my set here and I can't get away with it because you're not that much better of an athlete than the guy across from you. So yeah, I mean, it's something you have to get used to and, and really adopt because you'll, you'll get your butt kicked if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, in listening to you talk, is it too simplistic to say you really like your job? I do, yeah. I mean, this is what I've always dreamed of doing is playing in the NFL, and I'm kind of living the dream. So, yeah, I definitely it's, it's more fun being a, a second-year guy and not a rookie. Being a rookie is very <laughs> intense and overwhelming. So just a lot more comfort, too. So I do like my job, yes. Can I ask the last one? Yeah. I, but what we talked about, the one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we were talking about guys come in, first-round pick, you know, and – you think to yourself, you know what it's going to be. You're from the Chicago area. You go to school in Evanston, so you're right there with everything. And now you're in Nashville, Tennessee, in a part of the country you've never lived. You're playing professional football. Was it more of a change than you initially thought it would be when you came in here a year ago? Um, I don't know what I expected really coming in. Uh I just knew everyone would be better and it'd be a little bit, a lot more intense and a lot more professional in that, in terms of the work environment. Um, you know, it's definitely a little bit, it can be a little bit isolating in a sense that it's not really like college where everyone's the same age and everyone's kind of rowing the same boat and everyone's going to class and you live in the dorms and you're all kind of have the same goals. You know, you're in a professional environment where guys are older, they have families, you know, guys might get cut tomorrow and you won't see them again. Um, you know, and also being a younger guy in terms of, you know, I was the youngest guy on the team, so, like, a little bit harder to relate with guys. You know, everyone, everyone, all my friends are still in college and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I think it was a little bit surprising in terms of how many differences there were. Um, but I think I kind of grew into it as the year went on and, and started to enjoy those differences. Um, you know, I like the NFL level in terms of, like, the professionalism and, you know, coaches aren't necessarily on you about every single thing. Like, they respect you to have a little bit of ownership. Um which I like and I, I enjoy and I appreciate that freedom and, and independence. So, um, yeah, definitely coming out was a little bit surprising. And as the year went on, more surprises. But I also feel like I grew into them. All right. So if you have one more, you may have it. No, I think that's the perfect way to end. That's a I great answer. That. Cool. that was a great answer. It's so Thank good you. to have you with yeah. us on the Thank OTP. Thank you. It's great to be here. The one question I have, do you know what the OTP stands for? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> It's not that deep, it's, really. It's, on the it's prowl. Appa- it's apparently harder than TikTok. It, it, I mean. Official Titans podcast. Okay. Then I knew some P was podcast. I just didn't know <laughs> the o and what the, the O and the T was. You know, I, I, I don't know. We're not that deep. All right. That's, really, that's fair. Yeah. Peter Skaronsky, thank you. <laughs> Seat Geek is the official ticketing partner, OTP, official Titans Take. podcast. OTP. Thank you. Seat Geek is the official... <laughs> Official ticketing partner. partner, which is also, also OTP. OTP. SeatGeek is the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. Whether you're buying or selling <laughs> tickets to Titans games or any live event in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek, the new official ticketing partner of the Titans. So Titans fans can fan. Mike Keith, it's time. It's time. It's time. We are joined by Will Levis, quarterback for your Tennessee Titans. Ding. Guys, thank you so much for having <laughs> me. Excited to talk some ball, talk uh, talk life. We're so happy to have you here, and um, your life looks dramatically different than it did, say, a year ago this time. You are now 
no longer a rookie in the National Football League. You are the starting quarterback for the Titans, and you have a new head coach who is an incredibly quarterback-minded coach. That is his background. His bread and butter is working with quarterbacks. He was a quarterback. He was a quarterback (laughs) himself. For you, how different has that experience been working with Brian Callahan, um, given that he is so involved in the quarterback world? It's been a pleasure. I mean, having the experience that he's had working with the great quarterbacks that he's been able to work with and you know, the prolific offenses that he's been able to be a part of and how he's been able to see how those offenses work and then moving it over here and, and, and doing it here in his own way. So from the moment that I talked to him for the first time, you know, instilling confidence in me, letting me know, uh, you know, that I'm the guy that's going to take us forward. And that's been – it's given me the right mindset going forward to, to get everyone ready. And, and like I said, he's just been a blast to work for. Did you call any of the quarterbacks he had worked with to get a scout on him? I've talked to uh, Peyton a little bit about him, so um, ran into him and, and since the, the hire was made and, and talked to him a little bit about it and picked his brain, but yeah, I mean, big shoes to fill for sure, but it's exciting to, to see that, you know, he's been able to have these great quarterbacks and learn from them and, and how they got to, to the levels that they're at. We asked Peyton Manning to give us a comment about Brian Callahan when he was hired, and he was actually playing golf at Pebble Beach yeah. hmm. and took the time to send us a video. That's how strongly he felt about Brian Callahan, that he wanted to take that time from a nice golf outing to say, hey, this guy is that special, and I'm so glad he became a head coach. My guess from what you're saying is you're not surprised that guys who have been around Brian in that way would be that loyal. Not at all. Yeah, I mean, every guy that I've – talk to that has played for Brian quarterback or not you know just has nothing but great things to say about him and each and every day I'm you know reminded of that and and I get to know more about him and understand more of how his brain works and and what he is trying to get out of his players uh, as a head coach and you know I got to compliment him on the great job that he's done so far. Now we are in the off season so this is the time where you do a lot of tweaking and uh, refining of a lot of different aspects of the game you're not game planning every week Um, But are you surprised by the level of detail that he gets into when you guys are maybe watching film or are working on some aspect of quarterback play? Uh, No, I mean, that's what it takes, and he understands that, and I think we've all been able to buy into that too. It's it's a lot for sure, but, you know, we've been able to – walk in there for the last few weeks and just be sponges and take in all this new information uh, as well as we can and then put it out there on the practice field um, and hopefully get some good film out of it. So we've already been able to to see that and now kind of going through the offense and being able to rep things for the second time and learning from previous reps. Uh, It's been amazing, but definitely, uh, you know, wasn't surprised because, you know, if if you're going to take your offense to the levels that you know you want it to go to, then you have to approach it with that level of, you know, intricacy. Nick Holtz is the offensive coordinator. Bo Hart agrees the quarterback coach. Obviously, Brian Callahan is basically running the offense. He'll call the plays, and he knows the position. What's it like to be the quarterback in the dynamic between the three of those coaches? It's, it's cool. I mean, they're all three in there in meetings. So you know, it, having the head coach actually stand up there and, and do the install with the whole offensive unit and go through all the little uh, you know itty-bitty pieces of – what guys are doing, um, it, it's it's cool to know that, you know, the guy obviously that's calling the plays is going to have to know that stuff, but it's the head coach. Like, it's the cool to know that it's the head coach up there doing that. And then taking it one step further, when we get to the quarterback room for our individual meetings, you know, a, a lot of the times it's it's Nick, it's Bo, and it's Brian. It's all three of them and, and three quarterbacks. So we got a good one-to-one ratio <laughs> of, uh, of coaches to players in there and, uh, you know, just a lot of ball knowledge that's spewed between all of them. Is that like too many coaches? <laughs> I mean, well, is Amy, that he's, more he's coaches? He's probably not going to say that. Well, I mean, it, it, this is a safe space. Um, that we're not recording. <laughs> yeah, we're not recording this. <laughs> no, I, I mean, that's got to be a lot more coach involvement than you've ever had in your career in terms of people who really that's a good question. are involved yeah. in your position specifically. It's not just running the offense where there's a lot of people involved in putting together what your plan is going to be. This is a lot of people involved in right. your specific part of the offense does it feel like a, a lot no it feels cool it's a it's a it's a pleasure and an honor to have that privilege of um having the head coach in there and, and teaching you and and having the background that he has with the position that you're in 
Uh, it's the first head coach that I've ever had that has that involvement with, with the quarterback room, which is cool. And, um, you know, on the field, he's been, he's been great for us. Uh, obviously, he's attending to all the other positions and everything, but as the quarterback, we want, as the person running the offense, he's making sure that uh, we're all on the right page and, and he's keeping us going as, as we're moving along. You were at the kickoff for the Special Olympics Games in Tennessee, and so many people were so touched – by everything about that. Um, how did you get involved in that night, and what did it mean to you? Uh, it's something, you know, that I've been wanting to be a part of here since I've been here, and I'm happy to finally be able to have that opportunity. And it's uh, an organization that I'd worked with previously and the, the couple other spots that I've lived and played at uh, throughout the years. So I wanted to make sure that I could, you know, ingrain myself in, in the community here. And, and get to know the athletes, and I know going forward I'm going to be involved with them uh, you know, a lot more. Why Special Olympics? Why is that something that's so important to you? Uh, it's something, you know, growing up in, in the people around me, in the family, in the community that, you know, I, I was involved with from a young age, just with, you know, people that were close to me, you know, buddy walks and other different uh, events that, you know, bring awareness and, and just happiness to the people of that community, and it just brings a smile on my face being able to bring joy to these people and, um, you know, just going up there and riling up the crowd and getting them, you know, excited for my favorite thing in the world, uh, which is sports. And uh, I know that they're all excited to, to go out there and, and they were excited to go out there and perform at each of their respective events. So just an awesome event. And uh, maybe uh, do it again for the winter, uh, winter ceremony, but hopefully we're still playing at that time. So I don't think uh, it would be uh, an option. My cousin Laura was one of the first Special Olympians in Tennessee. She was a swimmer, and she swam for years and years. And it was always so wonderful to go and see these athletes because it was at its purest form. I mean, they had just the, the best time. And even today, covering sports as we do, it's still great to see that. As a professional quarterback, I've got to think – it's remarkable. It sort of brings you back to what it's really all about. Yeah, Fair? I think it's all about just the love of the game and the love of uh, whatever sport or activity that you know the athletes are participating in, and the hard work that goes into getting them to that moment and performing on that stage. And I think we can all relate to that in anything we've ever worked hard for, whether it's sports or uh, anything else that you know we take seriously in our lives, and um, you know whether it's the, the Super Bowl or, or, you know, the Special Olympic stage, like that moment means the world to anyone um, and whoever's going to be put in that position to, to go out there and to, to do your best. It's, you know, a lot of pressure, but that's what it's all about. And um, just an op awesome opportunity for the athletes to go out there and prove to themselves and others what they're capable of. Seeing you spend time in the community here in Nashville is really cool, but you've also been – just a lot of places around Nashville we've seen you at sporting events soccer games hockey games all of the things um have you enjoyed getting to experience Nashville a little bit more and not be just like the new kid in town who's trying to figure everything out for sure yeah I think that first year it was a lot of nothing it was a lot of just you know coming <laughs> coming to the, coming to, to to play ball and focusing on this and not really having the time and energy to you know focus on uh, the city and getting to know uh, the community as much as I would have liked to. And, and since the season ended, having uh, that time between then and now to, to really kind of um, put my boots on the ground and understand the different parts of this amazing city. But your rookie year feels like you did really well. You you came in, you were the quiet guy, you were the third quarterback, you learned, you you picked up things, eventually you became the starting quarterback, you had success. You had ups and downs, you battled injury, and yet it, it feels like it was a very productive rookie year that you can build on. Is, is that the way you see 2023, or is there something you would, have, you would have changed? For sure. No, I think I just wanted to make the most of whatever opportunity was given to me um, when, when it was given to me, and I felt like I put myself in the right spot to, to be ready for that opportunity. But um, wouldn't have approached it any differently than, than how I did. Uh, I felt like, you know, just had a good mindset and good preparation process throughout training camp and throughout the season to be ready for when my name was called. Um, but now it's just it's time to take it to that next step and to, to make that next leap forward. And, you know, I'm not a rookie anymore. There's no, no more of those rookie excuses or rookie mistakes. And, uh, you know, I'm going to go out there and play like the quarterback that, you know, I can be. Peter Skronsky just told us that year two is definitely better than year one. Do you agree with that? Yeah. <laughs> 
For sure. From just uh <laughs> you know stress standpoint of, of not obviously we have a new offense so it is new stuff, but you're not experiencing all of this for the first time and uh you have a, more of a feel of kind of what it's like to be a part of uh this locker room or an or an NFL locker room. So that alone along with being more familiar with the city that we're living in now and having, you know, a more solid friend group and, and comfortability with the people around us, uh, you know, makes it easier for us to go out there and do our jobs a little uh, with more peace of mind than if you're a rookie. We are enjoying watching you work this spring. Can't wait for training camp in the season. Will Levis, thanks for taking time on the OTP. By the way, do you know what OTP stands for? Off-season training – Phone calls. I don't know. I was yeah, gonna, off yeah. season training. Phone <laughs> yeah. calls. Exactly yeah, that's it. really that's good. And I like that he went with the P gotta, as a PH for actually an F sound. Yeah, yeah. That that's was, that's nice. That's nice. How he did yeah. that. Boy, we've got some, we it. have some real marketing work. To yeah, do we on are this. not doing a good job. Poor. Yeah. No. Poor. <laughs> <laughs> Official <laughs> Titans podcast. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not. I'm not a podcast listener right now. For That's this okay. One, but I'll, well, don't I'll worry. We'll put it on your phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. before you leave. We'll, uh, we've you're got a, you. You're a quarterback. You do what you need to do. We're, and uh, we'll, the most we'll recent up, subscriber. We'll come over to your house and act it out if we have to. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you, just, you need. You just be successful. We don't, <laughs> for Amy Wells and Will Levis, I'm Mike Keith. Thanking you for listening to the official off-season training phone, phone call. Phone call. The official o- Titans podcast. I got it. <laughs> OTP. Bye.